would like to apologize. I put these in the wrong order. Um, I was going based on the order that they were given and it was incorrect and I forgot to fix it. So I need to apologize for that. So we're going to skip ahead to slide 12. So slide 12. And what I would like you to do is to take some time and pause the video and do these problems. And I'd also like to apologize for my background noise because I'm at home right now. So pause the video and try these problems. Okay, go ahead and check your answers. Um, if you have any questions on any of these problems that I'm having you do in class, go ahead and circle them. And when I come back on Thursday, we can go over any questions you might have. But just go ahead and look at the work here. Um, check your answers. You guys can pause the video again as much as you need to. And we'll go from there. All right, so we have some definitions. Um, we have the word congruent. And congruent figures are figures that have identical shape and size. And the symbol for congruent is basically a squiggle with an equal. So you just draw a squiggle and then an equal. Then we have corresponding. And corresponding means things in the same relative position. So if you look at these two triangles, they're the same size and shape. So these two triangles are congruent. And if I label the triangles, what we have for our corresponding parts, A and D are corresponding. B and E are corresponding and C and F are corresponding. They're in the same position in the shape. Okay. Two triangles are congruent only if the vertices can be matched in such a way that the measures of the angles and sides are equal. So if we look at these two triangles, just by looking at them, for this purpose, we're going to assume that they're the same size. If we were to cut this out and drag it over, it would be the same size. So we have same size and shape. That means they're congruent. If we look at these other two triangles, you can obviously tell that they're not the same size or shape, so they're different. So they are not congruent. So not just put a slash through it. All right, next we have two different ways to show congruence. And so I drew these two extra triangles on the bottom. And we'll just label them the same, even though they're a little bit smaller. So one of the ways we can show congruent is by putting tick marks on everything. Um, one tick mark, one tick mark, that indicates that these two sides are the same length, two and two, three and three. And then we can do the same with the angles. You draw a little loop to show it's an angle and you put tick marks in it. Now, I personally don't use this. I think it looks very Frankenstein-y, um, but this is correct. Another way that we can show congruence of the angles is with multiple loops. So C and L were the same, so they each get one loop. Then A and K, or J, sorry, J were the same, so they each get two loops. And then B and K could each get three loops. These mean the same thing, it's just a matter of preference. So either one, whatever one you like best. All right, so corresponding parts. Corresponding parts are going to be the parts that are equal to each other or congruent. So in this example, I can tell by the tick marks that angle A is congruent to angle J. These are corresponding. 
angle B is congruent to angle K, and angle C is congruent to angle L. Now with the sides, there's two ways to indicate congruence or sameness. If I use the symbol for congruent, I don't just write A, B, and J, K. I have to put the line over top of them, and that's because this line indicates that we're talking about a segment. So this is the segment AB is congruent to the segment JK. Now if you don't want to draw the lines on them, you don't use the congruent symbol, you use an equal sign because when you have no line, it's indicating the length. So this is the length of AB is equal to the length of JK. So here we have the segments are congruent, or here we have the lengths are equal, and that's really saying the same thing. So I have AB was the same as JK, and then we have BC is congruent to KL. Or again, if you don't have the line segments. And then AC is congruent to JL or AC is equal to JL. Okay. We don't have to have pictures though to be able to determine what parts correspond. The order that you write the letters in are very important. If we come back to this side, this would be triangle A, B, C. Now because I wrote them in this order, A, B, C, this is going to be triangle J, K, L. We have to write them in the same order that they were presented in. So when we look at this, we can tell from the order that they come, triangle D, E, F, D is going to correspond to R. E is going to correspond to S and F is going to correspond to T. So when I write that, angle D is congruent to angle R, angle E is congruent to angle S, and angle F is congruent to angle T. So the angles are fairly simple. Now for sides, two letters indicate a side. So I have the first two letters, D, E, so if I take the first two letters of this group, I take the first two letters of the second. Last two letters, last two letters. And then my third side is going to be the first and last. So first two, last two, and then first and last. Don't forget, you can pause anytime you need to so everybody has time to write. Okay. Sometimes pictures help, though. If you need to draw a picture, draw a picture. They don't have to be perfect. Just draw two triangles. Obviously, these are not the exact same, so I'm just going to put a little congruent sign in between them so I know that I mean them to be the same. And when you label them, if I start here, let's say I start here with A, go around clockwise. So then I would start here with P and I'm going to go clockwise. B is in this position. I want to know what angle is B congruent to while well, they're going to be in the same position. So B is corresponding to Q which means that angle B is congruent to angle Q. All right, now we have some problems to try. Um, remember, congruent angles are in the same position. And then my advice, this picture is awful. Don't use that picture. I would stick to the order of the letters. So I'd concentrate on that. So take a few minutes, 
pause the video, go ahead and work on these, and then come back to it, and we'll go over it. Okay, so the way I did these, angle C and angle W correspond. I want to know the measure of angle C. Well, angle C is equal to or congruent to angle W, so therefore it's 119. To figure out which X equals, if you look, X is across from the 90 degree angle, so I'm going to cross from the 90 degree angle. I find 17, so therefore X is 17. And for C, L, K, L, K, J, N, go in the same order. Same thing, angle J, M, N, so I went J, M, N, so I came over here and I went L, J, K. Please excuse my neurotic cat. All right, so we want to try to use this diagram and take this quiz. This is a take-home quiz. And it will be due on the same day as the packet, which at this point is probably going to be next Tuesday. Um, so it'll be due the same day as the packet. So work on this at home. And now we need to go backwards to the beginning of the packet. Sorry about the out of order again. And let's talk about some of these. So why don't you go ahead and try these. And then you know, pause the video and then come back in a few minutes. Okay, check your answers. And if you have any questions, we can go over these on Thursday. So go ahead and take a couple seconds and check your answers. All right. So we have some postulates. And if you remember, postulates don't have to be proven. These are just statements that are accepted as fact. Okay, so the first postulate is the side, side, side postulate. So SSS, so side, side, side. Okay, and what that states is if you have a triangle and you have three sides that are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then those two triangles are congruent to each other. So if all three sides are the same length, then the triangles are congruent. Then we have the angle side angle postulate. And what this postulate states is that if you have an angle and then a side and then another angle, so two angles are congruent with the sides between them, then you have the two triangles are congruent. And there's pictures of this on the next slide, so we'll go over that with the pictures in just a second. And finally, you have side, angle, side. And what this states is if you have a side or two sides with an angle between them that are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. Now you'll notice I don't have angle, side, side. I have angle, side, angle, or side, angle, side. We do not have angle, side, side, and forgive me for cussing, but there are no asses in geometry. That's not a congruence theorem, so never use angle side side. Okay, no cussing in my class. Right. So for the pictures, angle side angle. See, angle side angle. So you just write ASA, angle side angle. And that's what that looks like. You have two angles with the side between them congruent. And here we have three sides that are congruent, so that's side, side, side. And then this is what this looks like. We have side, angle, side. So two sides with the angle between them congruent. All right, so to find the value of x that makes the triangles congruent, then we want to state the postulate. Well, this is a triangle and this is a triangle, and they share this side in common, so this length is going to be 17 for both triangles. This is 9, well then x needs to also be 9. And what I have is side, angle, 
side. All right, so let's try these. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and then we'll go over them. All right, so what we have, if you look at this, you have a side and another side with an angle between them, so that gives you side angle side. Here we have a corresponding common side, so I have three sides, so side, side, side. And then if we look at the length, 19, 19, 28, this would have to be 28, and then 35, 35, and so this is also going to be side, side, side. Now this picture is unique in that you could theoretically use your definition of vertical angles and then know that these two are the same and you could theoretically also use side angle side. This was what we were looking for but this was also true. Alright so we're on to benchmark 19. Um, we want to use angle, angle, side, and right triangle congruent. So we have, there's a, a theorem in geometry that says if we have isosceles triangles, so isosceles is that these two sides are the same length, that makes these two angles the same. Okay, so if these two sides are the same, these two angles are the same, so we need to find x, well this is also x. So I have 180 minus 52 will give me my two x's. So 180 minus 52 is 128. So that's two x's. So if I divide 128 by 2, I get x is 64. To see if this will work, I want to see is this angle here 59. So I'm going to just double check it. And if I do 180 minus 59 minus 62, I do get 59. So that works. So these two angles are the same. If these two angles are the same, these two sides are the same. So x will equal 5. Go ahead and try these two. Okay, x will be 7. And this is an equilateral triangle. All three sides are the same. Oops. If all three sides are the same, all three angles are the same. So I'm just going to divide by 3, and I am going to get x equals 60 degrees. All right, now we have theorems. Remember, theorems are proven. Okay. So we have AAS. That's angle angle side. So I have two angles in a row with a side following them that are congruent and the two triangles are going to be congruent. And then we have hypotenuse leg. I never can spell hypotenuse. It's right there too hypotenuse leg, which states that if you have two right triangles and the hypotenuse, the two hypotenuse are the same length. So if you call, if you have a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side, which is directly across from the right angle. So if the hypotenuse and a leg, these are the legs, so if either of those legs are the same length as another triangle and the hypotenuse are the same length, then the triangles are congruent. And then you have hypotenuse angle. And when you're talking about hypotenuse angle, you're not talking about the right angle. You're talking about either of these two angles. So if you have the hypotenuse and either of these other two angles that are the same, then the triangles are congruent. So this is what that looks like. We have angle, angle, side. Here we have hypotenuse, 
and leg. And here we have hypotenuse and angle. Those, so those are the pictures of what that looks like. All right, to determine what theorem makes the pair of triangles congruent, these are my hypotenuse. And then I have angles. So this is going to be hypotenuse angle. All right, I would like you guys to try A and B on your own, and then we'll go over C together. So go ahead and pause the video. All right, here we had angle, angle, side. Okay, angle, angle, side, so angle, angle, side. These, this line is the hypotenuse to both of these triangles, and I have a leg, so that's hypotenuse leg. Now we're going to do a proof. Okay, the first line, always given. So angle R and angle T are right angles. That was given. And then angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 was also given. So I'm going to label that angle 3 and angle 4. QS is congruent to itself. So remember, any time something is equal to or congruent to itself, that's like a reflection. It's the same on both sides. So that's reflexive property. And now I have hypotenuse and angle. So the two triangles are congruent by hypotenuse angle. Let's do one more. Okay, angle A is congruent to angle D. That's given. And I'm going to just label that. Angle A and angle D are congruent. And then CBD, so CBD, that's this little angle right here, is congruent to B. CA, so this is this little angle right here. That was also given. Now, it sometimes helps to take these triangles and draw them sort of separately. And I have that these two are the same, and that these two are the same. So I just basically, I, I spread them apart. Well, BC is the same as itself. That's reflexive. And then what I have is angle, angle, side. Okay, now what I need you to do is in your packets, Go to page 35 in your packet. So this is on page 35. And that's benchmark 18. Okay, and look at number 13. And I want to go over this proof with you before I give you the homework assignment. Okay, so let's look at how you go about a proof like this. So remember we have two columns, statements and reasons. Actually, I'm going to give myself more room on the reasons, statements reasons. Okay, so my first statement is EH and DG bisect each other. Okay, so let's look at that for a second. Remember what it means to bisect? The word bisect is to cut in half. Okay, so if I take EH and I cut it in half, that means these two are the same length. And if I take DG and I cut it in half, that means these two are the same length. Okay, that was given. And what it means is that EF is congruent to FH and DF is congruent to FG. That's the definition of bisecting. Bisect means we cut it in half, so if we cut it in half we get two equal parts. So now I have two sides, side and side. I need to come up with either, if we go back to our postulates or our theorems, 
the ones with two S's, we have side, 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 or side, angle, side. So sometimes it's helpful. So we have side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, angle, side, hypotenuse, leg, and hypotenuse, angle. These are the different types of things that make triangles congruent. Since I have two sides, that rules out, uh, oh, well, the two sides rules out these two, and the fact that it's not right triangles rules out the hypotenuse. So we have just these two options, side, 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 or side, angle, side. Now, I have nothing that tells me that these two outside lengths are the same. But I do know that these two angles are the same because they're vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and number them. One and two. And I'm going to say angle one is congruent to angle two because they are vertical angles. And now I have side, angle, side. So I can say triangle DEF is congruent to triangle G. HF because side, angle, side. Okay, so that's how you break these proofs down. I'm going to do a couple of them from benchmark 19 as well. So um, go ahead and turn to that page. Okay, so now we're on benchmark 19, which is page 37, and I'm going to do number 9. So let's look at, we have a lot of given statements here. So let's go ahead and do our statements and our reasons. Okay, so if x is the midpoint of the u, that was given, wx is congruent to yx, also given, and angle w and angle y are right angles, given. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, W and Y are already labeled. Those are given. Uh, VX and YX are the same length. That's given. X is the midpoint of VU. Well, here's VU. X is the midpoint. That tells me, midpoint, halfway between, that these two are going to be the same length. So that's going to be my next line. Midpoint tells me something. So VX is the same length as XU. That's the definition of midpoint. Right? Midpoint is kind of like bisecting. It breaks things into two halves. It's in the middle. So we define it. We say the two parts are the same length. That's the definition of midpoint. I now have a right angle. I have hypotenuse across from the angles. My hypotenuse are the same, and my legs are the same. So my triangles, oops, VWX is congruent to triangle UYX by hypotenuse leg. And these just take a little bit of practice. So usually you take your given statements, you have to define something, and then the next line is usually enough to tell you what, how your triangles are congruent. So for your homework assignment, okay. Uh, again, I'm sorry if things are out of order. I want you to go to page 34. Okay, so page 34 is the supplemental nine practice. And it comes after page 37, sorry. And I want you to do the odds. Okay. And then you'll come back to page 35, which is the benchmark 18 practice. Looks like that. And I want you to do... 1 through 11 odds, and then 15. So 
So that's benchmark 18. Do 1 through 11 odds, and then 15. Um, you can do 14 for extra points and evens. Same here, evens for extra points. And then finally, page 37. No, there is no page 36. I don't know what happened to it. It just died. Um, okay, and on page 37, I want you to do the odds. I've already done nine for you, but I want you to do the odds and then again, evens for extra points. Okay, and if you have any questions at all, circle them, mark them in some way, and when I come in on Thursday, we'll go over it all. All right, enjoy your movie. See you Thursday.